So, uh, this talk, today's talk, is about merge mining. Uh, why it matters, why it is so important to lose talk, but also why merge mining is so important for Bitcoin. So, let's get started. So, the, in this talk, I will talk about three different topics. One is one of the key differences between proof of work and proof of stake, and why the Bitcoin community and the Rooster community we stick with proof of work, and why we value proof of work. The second, I'm going to explain in a little bit technical terms what merge mining is. I think that everyone should know a little bit how this works. Uh, if you are not a technical guy, a technical person, then just try to, to, to grasp, you know, how, a little bit of how it works. And then we'll talk about some innovations that Rustock has and that we are planning uh, from the innovation and research team in IOB Labs to bring to uh, the Rustock community. So first of all, the basics. What is a blockchain? A blockchain is a ledger. Uh, a database, a shared database between all the nodes. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network, so message flow from one node to another, and it's a consensus protocol that establishes how blocks of transactions are sequentially added to this shared ledger. And of course, this is very important because uh, we want to keep all the nodes in consensus so that we prevent double spends. Uh, there are many, many differences between proof of stake and proof of work, which the, the, the names, these are only civil resistance method uh, names, but the actual protocols are called Nakamoto consensus, and in the case of uh, Ethereum, it's uh, Gasper consensus, right? Uh, but there are many, many differences. Uh, we know that, that proof of stake tends to centralize power, tends to make the rich richer, uh, but I'm going to focus today on a very practical and technical aspect that relates to proof of work with proof of stake, which is called um, the objective versus subjective consensus protocols. So in the case of Bitcoin, if I'm running a node and I disconnect from the network, I have a problem, or I reconnect a day later or maybe a month later or a year later, then basically I only need to connect to one honest peer and I can get the blockchain, the best chain from the network, and I can be 100% sure that there is no other better chain in, the, in, the, in this peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. Just one honest peer, it's enough. But even if I cannot find a single honest peer into you know, the pool of peers that are available, it's very, very hard to anyone to create a competing fork of the Bitcoin network because it really requires, you know, to keep mining at least for 2,000 blocks just to lower one-fourth difficulty, and then you need to mine another 2,000 blocks to lower it again just to be able to mine, you know, some, some blocks very fast to fool someone into a double spend attack. So really, it really is hard to create a competing view of the, of the blockchain. In the case of proof-of-stake protocols, uh, this is completely different. If I disconnect uh, from a month and it happens that the committee of uh, stakers have changed, then basically when I connect again, um, even if I have an honest peer, if I have a, just one dishonest peer, I may not be able to differentiate which of these two forks is the real one. So that's why when we talk about proof of stake, we need a trusted party. So if I disconnect and I reconnect, I will need, you know, the Ethereum Foundation or the core developer. Someone needs to tell me which is the right fork. And this is, has enormous consequences. Like, um, basically, it means that you will be trusting someone uh, unless you are all online all the time. Um, the, one of the, uh, the Bitcoin's Nakamoto consensus is not the only objective consensus protocols. Ghost and Decor, this is the consensus protocol that Arustok uses, are also uh, objective consensus protocols. So now let's, because we've, uh, we've chosen to do mining and we need to do merge mining. 
So what is merge mining? Merge mining, sometimes called, called auxiliary proof of work or proxy proof of work, is a method in which uh, a secondary chain um, starts mining together with a primary chain with the same hardware, basically with the same mining operations, with, with the same hash rate, without additional investment or without significant additional investment, I'm able to mine the two f blockchains at the same time. And what is important and what is generally chosen, the merge mining, is because it allows different block rates. A Rustock has a 30, approximately 30 second block rate, Bitcoin has 10 minute block rates. We have proposals in, in, from the community to uh, reduce the time down to five seconds block rate in Rustock, and this is 100% compatible with the, with the Bitcoin mining. But Bitcoin merge mining does, was not born in, uh, in Rustock. It has a very interesting history. So the first mention to merge mining was actually from Satoshi. He conceived this idea of BitDNS, a network where you could register names, like domains, right? And uh, what was interesting about this is that nobody uh, thought this could be an attack to Bitcoin. Because these two networks, the supposed Bit BitDNS and, and Bitcoin, were not competing to become money. I mean, everyone knew, okay, Bitcoin will be the money, and BitDNS will be just another token to buy your domains. But it's, it's not something that we compete. So the incentives were aligned. That's why in 2011, Namecoin, which was a blockchain to register domain names, create, adopted merge mining with the Bitcoin mining function. And, and, and it, it did merge mining for a, couple of, a number of years. But something happened in 2012. Then another blockchain that was called Collatecoin, was created and decided to do merge mining again. Aha, we can have free, free security. Let's do it. And Luke Jr., which was, and still is one of the Bitcoin core developers, he took his own hash rate, not took his pool hash rate, he had a, a very large pool, he took his own hash rate, and with his own hash rate, he was able to 51% attack and destroy completely uh, the Collide coin. So what it tells us is that it's not enough to have high hash rate, but also there must be shared incentives, right? So the important is that Rustock shares incentives with Bitcoin, that Rustock is a Bitcoin sidechain. If Rustock was not a Bitcoin sidechain, it was just, just another blockchain, it wouldn't be possible to do this securely. And in, 2000, in 2014, Dogecoin adopted the discrete merge mining with Litecoin. And this was a very interesting event because there was a kind of hash wars between the two chains. Like, what happened was that everyone was mining at Dogecoin, and then the difficulty of, of Dogecoin would rise because everyone was mining and it was more, more profitable. And then everyone would switch to mining Litecoin, and then, you know, it was more profit, profitable, and then the difficulty of Litecoin would go up, and Dogecoin would go down. The block rates were completely crazy. And yeah, it's, it was a big problem for both blockchains. So again, sharing incentives makes this, this possible. So they started merge mining. And of course, in 2018, Rustock started merge mining. It was very uh, low hash rate at the beginning. We had a, a support, a backup system that was federated in case, you know, uh, the, the hash rate went down uh, too much. Uh, I think one month after, after Rustock was launched, uh, this, this backup system was disconnected. So we had merge mining right from the beginning. And in 2021, we reached, I think, 40% of Bitcoin merge mining. Then there was a number of events, uh, I would say, uh, uh, attacks on China's, China's miners, and then it went down. And approximately we have now 50% of Bitcoin uh, merge mining. And we are the leaders, of the, we are the leading use case in, in Bitcoin merge mining, in, in merge mining in any blockchain, right? So <clears throat> if we take a look at you know, this incredible increase in hash rate, this is, this, this is the amount of computation that's going on every second. So the current hash rate is 267 exahashes per second. That's 10 to the power uh, of 18, right? And I don't know, I see a, a lot of people are young here, but uh, uh, 20 years ago, there was a digital encryption standard, was the, the, the encryption that SSL used it, you know, to, for peer-to-peer -peer communication, for the internet. And as a digital encryption standard had a key that was 56 bits in length, right? So 
currently the Bitcoin network, the amount of hash power is breaking 2,000 of these key per seconds. Like it was only 20 years ago that we considered that secure. So that's the amount of hash caching power that is secure in the Bitcoin right now. But I, I've told you why uh, it, this, this is it's important for Rustock to have the security, but why it is also important for Bitcoin and why Bitcoin miners are super interested to have these uh, side chains um, there for a long run, for the long term. So this is the money, Bitcoin money supply and you know, this, this, uh, the inflation rate and each one of these uh, steps is the reduction, the halving, where, where the reward, bulk reward is, is halved. And we don't know what will happen with the security of the Bitcoin network. We really don't know. We expect that the Bitcoin will value, uh, will increase in value, and we will have a security budget to keep these six blocks of confirmation. But maybe, maybe that does not happen. Maybe we will need 10 blocks of confirmation or 20 blocks. We don't know. Because, you know, still, still early times. So one of the important things about Merge My Sidechains is they can provide an additional revenue stream for Bitcoin miners. And we know for sure that Rustock can generate uh, enough revenue for Bitcoin miners to you know, make this uh, a changing factor for the industry. So in the long run, I, I, I really think that uh, this could be a decisive factor for Bitcoin miners. So now, what, what is mining and what is merge mining? I've, I've said a lot of merge mining, I haven't explained it. So you know the process of mining, how it works. You have the Bitcoin header, you have a set of you know, transactions that are hashed in a Merkle tree, you get the root, and then you have a nonce counter that you increment every time, trying to you know, win the lottery and create this hash digest with a number of zeros uh, in, in, in the, uh, I mean, if you interpret this, this has a big internal number, this should be lower than a specific target, but essentially it's like asking for a number of zeros and this is hard and you will need to try a lot of times. So this is, this is how mining works. If you are very, very lucky, you may get it on the first time, time but probably not. So the idea of merge mining is to link a Bitcoin header with a, uh, with a rootstock header so that these two are univocally linked. There is no way to link a Bitcoin header with two different rootstock headers. So then we, we, we know that we, have, we are inheriting the security of that block. So we have to put in the Bitcoin, in some place unique in the Bitcoin uh, transactions, a hash of a RSK block. And originally, this, this, uh, this was part of the Coinbase field of the Bitcoin generation transaction, also sometimes called Coinbase transaction, which is the first transaction of the Bitcoin block. And, and then you would put the, the tag here. Currently, we would, would not do that anymore because there are many other chains that are trying to merge mine. And we put that hash in the last output of uh, the, uh, this generation transaction. So we basically create a new output. We put any number of Satoshis. It could be zero Satoshi, it could be one Satoshi. This, this output is not going to be consumed. This is going to be you know, thrown away afterwards, but just a, a placeholder to put this information. And the important thing is that it is unique. So now we have to prove, every time we build our RSK block, we have to prove to the node that these two things are linked. And how do we, do we do that? Well, we have the uh, Bitcoin block, the Merkle tree. We can give a uh, Merkle inclusion proof, which is these complementary hashes that shows you that basically you can have the generation transaction linked to the Merkle tree. And then RSK does an optimization. Uh, it has a, a little bit of, of a weaker cryptographic assumption, which is called the free start collision resistance that SHA-2056 has. Uh, so we can skip the head part of the generation transaction, start with a SHA mid state, and specify the tail and the RSK block header, and we are done. So if we pack everything together, we get this thing, this uh, blob of data, and with this, this is the, the actual proof. So if we take a look at what Bitcoin is like, it's like a, a, um, a sequence of connected headers, and if you look at how Rustock is like, it's kind of similar, but you have a Bitcoin header which is connected with this, this, uh, this uh, merge mining proof into a RSK header. And this whole thing is what 
you know, you can use to prove to, to send the, you, you need everything to send to the network to, to provide a valid block. Okay, so RSK difficulty is a little bit lower than Bitcoin difficulty. So when you are mining, if you mine a Bitcoin block that has, you know, this level of difficulty, you can use it for RSK, for Rustock. And if you mine a block that has Bitcoin difficulty, you can use it for both, right? Because if it has Bitcoin difficulty, it also has RSK difficulty. That's why when you look at Bitcoin uh, in the Bitcoin Explorer, you, can, you look at Bitcoin blocks, you would see the RSK tag. It's not that those blocks are the only ones that belong to Rustock. Rustock actually has 20 times more blocks, but you, you will just see a sample of the, bit of the Rustock blocks in the Bitcoin network. Okay, so this is all about, I mean, the, a summary of how merge mining works. But now, what, what did you do to, to improve this? I mean, we realized that it had, it had some drawbacks that we could go through a period of low hash rate that, you know, we, we could have new adversaries that we haven't think about, and so we wanted to improve it. We wanted to make even more resilient. So we created several innovations. Es essentially, we, we had two strategies to improve merge mining. One is prevention, that is, the prevent the use of the current hash rate to rebuild Rustock history. Like, how can we prevent, you know, if all miners get go rogue and they want just to, you know, to attack us, attack, it, I, I don't think it will ever happen, but let's suppose that it happens. How can we prevent from then from rewriting Rustock past? And then we have some deterrence measures, which, which is basically how can we sh make any at attack visible to anyone in the Rustock so they can just enter a safe mode for some time. Okay, so if we see that there are, there are two competing forks, then maybe we can just stop accepting deposits for some time. Uh, an exchange can say, okay, we will, instead of taking 100 uh, block confirmation, we'll take 1,000 block confirmation for today. So because the attack won't be profitable, then there is basically no incentive for the attack. So these are the two strategies. I will just give you an example of this first strategy. This is called time sum uh, linking. This, this is uh, on the Rustock network since the RS upgrade. Basically, it forces you to have the, the, the timestamp on these two blocks must be separated uh, at most five minutes, which means that if I want to build a Rustock block that is in the past, like one day ago, then I have to, I cannot take Bitcoin's reward for that block because that would make the, the, the Bitcoin block invalid. If I want to cheat with a timestamp, that this forced me to cheat with a Bitcoin timestamp and Bitcoin has some margins, but essentially I cannot create a block which is more than two hours old. So this is one of the examples of how to prevent the rewriting of the, of the Rustock history. Um, and there is another proposal in the, in the repository, in the uh, research uh, repository, the RSK IPs, which is called external hash rate confirmation. And it's a way to grab all the mining hash rate that is not being used for mesh mining to protect the rich stock network. So let's say we have 50% of miners that are merge mining and 50% of miners that are just they don't care. So there is a way that we can grab that 50% and make it useful for the uh, Rustock network. So that, you know, if there is no attack ongoing, we secure the Rustock net with 100% of, of the Rustock hash rate. In fact, we could have, this is something very comical, we could have even more than 100% of the Bitcoin hash rate if we we've add up, you know, Bitcoin cash hash rate. So eventually we could be more secure than Bitcoin, which is kind of strange, right? Um, another way that we have in the Rustock network to defend against attack is called the for detection data. It's called the Armadillo monitoring system. This is a system that has been ongoing since almost the beginning, I think. Maybe Jose knows more about this. But essentially, in the RSK tag, there is enough information to link any two uh, blocks in the Bitcoin network to a specific Rustock fork. So if I just look at the Bitcoin network and I look at the, the blocks in the Bitcoin network that are merged mainly with uh, Rustock, I can detect forks. So with this uh, tool, we can prevent forks from even happening because we can spot them and we can just announce the, 
the, the network announced the community, hey, we have, we have a problem. Please don't accept the, uh, confirmation right now. And the good thing about this is it can be fully decentralized. Like anyone can run an Armadillo node and be able to detect by themselves if there is an attack ongoing. Uh, happily, we never have to use this system, which is, of, of course, uh, perfect, but we, we still use it to detect some anomalies in Bitcoin miners. Like, w what happens if a Bitcoin miner starts mining the same block over and over? We can detect it with this tool. Okay, so this is the, 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 the proposal for increase the security of merge mining. This is five different proposals that are currently in the, in the repository. And together, this increases the security of merge mining. Um, yeah, and this, this is everything. Um, I just want to summarize what I've said before. So Nakamoto consensus is the only objective consensus. So it's not like anything else. It's different. It's objective. It's better. Uh, you know that Bitcoin security is extremely high due to the hash rate. And a merge mine sidechain, which has aligned incentives with Bitcoin miners can really inherit 100% of this security. Uh, we are currently having more than 50% uh, in a monthly average of the Bitcoin hash rate, which makes RSK super secure. And we have all these innovations that we've been working since 2018 from uh, the IOB Labs research and innovation team um, that I, I, I love them to be merged into Rustock soon with the help of the community, of course. And that's it. If you want to know more about merge mining, there is a page in the rsk.co where you have a lot of information about not only about the technical details, but also if you want to start mining, there you can find information about how to do it. Thank you very much.